Hello, welcome to your personal forecast for February 2022. And uh, this reading is personal, like I said, it's for someone who was born on Sunday, July 9th, 1989 at 6.43 p.m. in Kirkland, Washington. And so you can see their chart here. They have Sun in Cancer, Moon in Libra, Sagittarius rising. Um, and in this video, we'll just be kind of going over the month of February and seeing what sort of themes are playing out here. So I will say for the month in general, the planets are mostly clustered, as you can see here, right before we start the month on January 31st. Uh, the planets will be clustered in Capricorn and Aquarius for this whole month, basically. The moon will, of course, make, complete a whole cycle, but um, you know, most all these inner planets are clustered around here. The sun will enter Pisces, but still, the main focus is on Capricorn and Aquarius. Now for you, you can see in your chart, Capricorn and Aquarius falls in this sector of your chart. And this range here, it ranges from the first through the second and third houses of your chart. So it's in that first quadrant. And so this means that this month will generally pertain to your self-expression, also your personal finances. And then later in the month, once we get into that, into Aquarius, um, Things will also kind of start to pertain more toward short distance travel and your neighborhood, you know, more increased activity and socializing, etc. Um, but as a whole, a lot of it does fall, a lot of the activity does fall into your second house. So there is a lot of activity with your finances for sure. Um, maybe spending a lot, but also making a lot of money as well. So that's just generally what the focus is, but let's get into more specifics here. So I wanted to actually start on January 31st because on this day, there's a new moon at 12 degrees Aquarius. And for you, um, 12 degrees Aquarius, this falls in your 12th house, pretty close to the third house, but I'm just going to say 12th house for, for, for the purpose of this video here. So this is showing a new beginning, just like all new, new moons are, but for you, Particularly, this indicates a new beginning with your finances. So maybe, you know, that increased activity I was talking about with maybe making more money, spending more money. So this could indicate, um, this could indicate, I don't know, a new source of money or maybe just making more money at your current job. So that increased activity there. But it's also showing, you know, we often want to spend money when there's activity in our second house. So you may be more indulgent or maybe just focusing on things you need more. Um, so you're making those extra purchases as well. So sp making more money, spending more money uh, starting January 31st here. And I do want to mention as well, Mercury's retrograde as we start out the month here at 25 degrees Capricorn. So this is in your second house as well. So this is showing that you may have to go back, you know, and at the end of, at the, the last, uh, part of January as well, going into February, you may have to kind of go back and edit your financial situation. So you may be kind of rethinking, reorienting yourself financially, uh, maybe like taking a different approach or a different look at your finances. To, you know, how are you spending money? How are you making money? Um, this is definitely a time for maybe kind of tweaking, changing your your financial situation. Oh, and also it can indicate delays. Uh, Mercury retrograde can indicate delays. So there could be, you know, maybe you purchase something that's taking a long time to finalize, or maybe you're working on making money, but that's taking a long time. Um, so there could be delays with your, your finances and your spending as well. Okay, let's go forward. So the first thing that really happens that I took note of was February 3rd. Uh, Mercury turns direct at 24 degrees Capricorn. And so this is where, you know, things may have been a little bit dysfunctional financially or taking a long time. And starting on February 3rd, now Mercury's turning direct. So you have newfound clarity involving your finances. Maybe you've kind of stabilized yourself a little bit more. And then now you're changing direction, moving forward again in a more linear way, more functional way. You know, you're maybe perhaps you're making money in a more functional way or spending money more effectively, but you're moving forward, you know, so if you were waiting for money that was coming your way or waiting for a purchase, there, this shows progress in that area. Things are finally moving financially for you, especially. 
uh, going forward to February 4th, Sun conjoins Saturn at 15 degrees Aquarius. And this is right, you know, in between your second and third houses, right on that cusp, sort of, and it's close to your north node. So this could indicate some kind of new growth opportunity for you. This may be a little bit challenging or heavy, something with heavy responsibility, maybe something involving your personal finances, or maybe helping a friend or helping a neighbor or um, some something involving a coworker, you know, someone that you see on a regular basis in your day to day. Um, there could be some kind of challenging event or theme on this day but also something that is good for your soul growth so it's helping your evolution in some way so i know that's a little bit vague but maybe you'll kind of understand what that means more so on this day here uh, so february 20 or excuse me february 6th through 8th moon um, enters taurus and so it starts to trine all these planets in capricorn so moon will pass over uranus and then it will try and you know, it will try at the same time. It will try and Mars, Venus, Mercury, and then Pluto over these next couple of days here. So, with all these Earth trines, for you, this focus is mostly first and second houses, and then fifth and sixth houses. So, um, so these kind of correspond to your your spending again and your your um, self expression as well to some extent. But then it also goes to the sixth house, which is more like maintenance and you know daily. Um, anything you're kind of maintaining in your life. So work, it's kind of maintenance of life or like your health. Um, so the focus is on those areas, but there's a positive focus there. Easy. Um, it, it's easy for this these few days here in terms of your self-expression, your, your confidence, uh, but also, you know, your job, how you're making money and, and your health as well. All these things are kind of flowing nicely for these couple of days here, especially. Um, okay, jumping forward a little bit to February 12th through 14th, Moon will be in Cancer for these couple of days, so I just thought that was really nice. With your Sun and Mercury in Cancer, much of your personality does lie here, and so with the Moon crossing over your natal Sun these couple of days here and your Mercury, it just indicates, um, I think, a general feeling of well-being and confidence. Things are kind of going your way more. You're more in your element for these couple of days here especially because you are so lunar ruled, moon rules so much of your personality. Um, I think this would be a, an, an especially strong couple of days for you here. February 16th, there's a full moon at 28 degrees Leo. And so for you, this is actually pretty interesting because 28 degrees Leo, whoops, it's up here. Um, it falls just two degrees away from your south. Node, so this transiting so this is your birth chart of course but the transiting sun is pretty much conjunct your natal north node and the transiting moon is pretty much conjunct your natal south node which isn't labeled here but it's exactly opposite the north node it's right around here um so this indicates let's see so full moon conjunct your south node this indicates maybe a time that you know you do have that side of your personality that is more outgoing you, you're good at being the center of attention um, having that kind of warmth and ca charisma, confidence, that vitality that people sense so much with you. So all that is kind of on full display on this day here. Uh, Leo full moon is very sociable. It's very much a party energy. You know, sun in Aquarius, moon in Leo opposing. Everyone's kind of expressing themselves more. So this is kind of a party energy for everyone in general. But for you in particular, it's striking your south node. And so this is something you feel very comfortable with. So you may be very much the center of attention on this day or very much leading things, you know, very much, um, I don't know, being very public on this day, having a lot of that attention or maybe leading a group of some sort. And it's touching on your nodal axis. So sort of karmic events could happen with this full moon. So there's just a lot of activity in general, but things may be kind of synchronistically lining up. So it almost feels theatrical, um, almost feels like too good to be true or larger than life. There's just things that are, you know, these coincidences or, you know, things that just happen to occur on this day that can be very meaningful and very impacting in a long-term way for you. So, you know, it's almost like just little random things that happen that actually turn out to be very meaningful and, and very maybe profound or, um, you know, again, impacting in a long-term way here. 
So that's just something, you know, this full moon is kind of important for you. It does strike those, your nodal axis there. Um, and it could also indicate, you know, some kind of, so, um, so South Node is something that we're good at, but it also shows some kind of dysfunction there because it's something that we're good at, but we may have gotten trouble with in a past life. So you're good at being the center of attention and being a leader, being confident, being spontaneous, but you may have had difficulty there in a past life. You may have been reckless. You may have been, you know, too vain or, or, um, are belligerent, you know, drunk with power, too, too outgoing, too confident, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of narcissism there, you know, in a past life. And so the, the moon, the full moon striking your south node, it could pick up on that. So, you know, th this is an area that you're very strong at, but it's almost like you have too much power there. Um, and so there's a balance that needs to be made, you know, to go into your north node in Aquarius to learn to be more detached or reserved, more holistic in your approach. I talk about this in your birth chart reading as well, but um, yes, yeah, so it really there's a lot of things here for this full moon, but hopefully some of that kind of resonates and makes sense with you. Um, also starting on February 16th and going onward, Venus and Mars begin to conjoin, and this is a very slow conjunction. So they travel, you know, they start to conjoin at 16 degrees Capricorn, but they stay together for a while. You can see if I just go forward here a few days, um, they're staying at pretty much the same degree, you know, for much of February. So that's very powerful. It indicates a lot of desire and, and um, pleasure, um, you know, being more motivated in that area. And so for you in particular, this is going through most of your second house, I would say, you know, starting around halfway through the Capricorn and going onward. So this is indicating you're more desiring money at this time. So you're more ambitious, maybe making more money. You know, again, second house is making more money and spending more money. And with Venus and Mars there, you're very much desiring things more at this time. But you're also more willing to work for them. And it seems like when you do put work into, you know, making money, it's almost like it's more easy at this time. Mars is giving you that extra energy and motivation, that ambition to sort of make money and to work hard. Um, and then Venus is making things easier, making things kind of just naturally come to you. So there's a lot of focus there. And this is really nice. You know, Venus and Mars together is such a fun dynamic. Um, you know, again, it's, you know, things where you desire and things that give us pleasure. It gives you that extra energy, but also makes things easier at the same time. So this does in, um, indicate some increased activity in our financial sector. And this is mostly positive. So maybe you are spending a lot, but you're also making a lot. Um, and if you are spending a lot, it's on things that you need or things that you very much desire, things that help your life be more comfortable or or um, things that, you know, engage your senses or support you in some way, basically. So this is all, this is all pretty positive. This is a nice aspect. Let's go forward to February 19th. And again, that Venus Mars dynamic it will continue for pretty much the rest of the month. Let's just go forward here for a second. Yeah, I mean they're pretty much conjunct. So I would say from around mid month onward, you have that everything I just talked about, that desire, that motivation, you know, spending money, uh making money, you know, things are easier there, things are more pleasant for the rest of the month. Uh February nineteenth, the moon enters Libra. Um, so I just notated this just because you have your natal moon in Libra and it's a very prominent part of your chart. You have your midheaven in Libra as well. So these next couple of days, February 19th, 20th, 21st, moon crosses over Libra. And so it's not only agreeing with your own moon, but it's also in this very, it's illuminating this very prominent part of your chart. So for these couple of days here, you're feeling very much in your element again, uh, very confident, very maybe more active. Um, things are easier, stronger for you, and you may be kind of extra um, visible as well, maybe in your career, for instance, or there's more activity at your place of work for these few days here. Okay. February 21st through 23rd, then moon enters Scorpio, and this is nice because the moon trines the sun so there's this water trine here with sun in pisces and moon in scorpio and as the moon progresses it will trine jupiter 
and then Neptune and Pisces as well. And I, the reason why I notate this is because you have, again, you have Sun and Mercury in Cancer. So that is a strong part of your chart. And so your Sun and your Mercury are like over here, you could imagine. And so as the Moon crosses through here, it makes these not only a trine with the Sun, but also trines with your Mercury and your Sun, and your natal Sun. So it, these sort of water grand trines start to emerge. So the part of you that is your Cancer Sun, the part of you that's more emotional, more sensitive, more intuitive, all that is kind of amplified and very harmonious for these couple of days here with these water trines. So this is excellent for being uh, not only very confident in your kind of emotions and your intuition, but also great for being creative. Water, you know, water energy is known for its creativity, its intuition. Um, it's also great for reflecting as well. So all this is kind of an opportunity to um, kind of engage that Cancerian side to your personality. All that will be stronger and more harmonious for these couple of days here. All right, and then February 24th. So I did notice that there's a third quarter moon at the beginning of Sagittarius. And it's not exactly conjunct your rising, but it's pretty close. So this would be a kind of different feeling. Think this could feel a little bit tenser. Um, you may feel extra anxious at this time. So I'd really suggest being productive. You have to get out there and do something, maybe get some work done or um, I don't know, do something where you can be kind of physically active because you may feel just restless and tense. So, you know, if you're trying to kick back and relax on this day, it would not go so well. You know, you may be irritated or or tired. Um, so again, I think, you know, the, the solution here is to be more active. You, you'll, you have this like frenetic restless energy. So you, you have to kind of put that to use um, towards something, you know. And you were born with a you know, moon squaring the sun in your natal chart. So this isn't completely foreign to you. Um, you may even kind of thrive off of this sort of angsty energy. Um, you know, like it's almost like a gritty type of energy, but it's something that you are naturally kind of able to work with and to make use of. So again, you know, it doesn't have to be so stressful or anxious as long as you just see it as an opportunity to be more active and to get um, some work done or or, I don't know, be more active in some way. February 25th through 27th, uh, so Moon enters Capricorn, and so I already said, you know, Venus and Mars are conjunct in Capricorn, lighting up your second house, and then now the Moon enters this area as well, and this becomes especially prone on the 26th and 27th. It becomes extra strong and prominent as the Moon sort of passes over Venus and Mars, so all four of these, you know, Moon, Venus, Mars, and Pluto are all clustered together in your second house at the end, the last half of Capricorn here. Um, so again, this, this indicates a huge focus financially. So maybe, you know, spending a lot, making a lot of money. Um, Pluto has been transforming your financial um, sector for years now and then now with Venus and Mars here there's that extra ambition and desire and pleasure there and then with the moon crossing over this area these couple days it puts the focus there that much more for this as well um, and with the sun making a loose sextile from Pisces I think this is pretty harmonious altogether um, there's just a lot of activity there so so again you know making more money I'm, I sound like a broken record but it's a prominent theme in this month that you're making a lot of money maybe spending a lot of money, but it's generally on things that are, you know, of value that you really desire that are um, enhancing your life in some way. Okay, and then that's all I have for February, but let's get into March just a little bit here. So March, whoops, March 1st, uh, we have that Venus-Mars-Pluto conjunction. So again, there could be something kind of transforming your finances at this time, something maybe kind of heavy, you know, um, maybe a challenge in some way. But again, there is also that ambition and desire there as well. So, so that's, you know, we're combining a lot of energies with all three planets pretty much conjunct here. Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe there is, I think that's the best I can kind of narrow it down. There's some kind of challenge there, some kind of transformation financially, but also a lot of ambition and desire and, um, and pleasure enjoyment as well. It's kind of mixed back there. There's a lot of activity. 
Okay, and then lastly, I'll wrap this up on March 2nd here. Uh, there's a new moon at 12 degrees Pisces. And for you, this is in your third house, let us say, here. Um, so this would indicate maybe a new beginning with, you know, increased activity for the next month with friends, neighbors, coworkers, um, increased short distance travel. So travel around your neighborhood or your town, um, that type of thing. You're more kind of active on those levels at this time. And that's what I have for you for February. So I hope that helps. Hopefully this resonates and it's uh, accurate for you. But I appreciate the request. If anyone else would like a reading, just email me at manic.mercurian at gmail.com. Uh, but thank you for this request and thanks for watching. And I'll see you later.